today we're talking about the worst feature of the internet, passwords and how to manage them. Ready for another year together? This is the first plain English of 2021 and it's number 326. I'm Jeff. JR, as always, is the producer and he has posted the full lesson online at plainenglish.com slash 326. Let's kick off 2021 with a little self-improvement. Passwords. If that word causes anxiety, then you're probably not using a password manager. Don't worry, I'm not either. But today, we'll talk about the benefits of using a password manager and why I will be adopting one in 2021. The expression is a breeze, and we have a quote of the week. We've all been there. You're staring at the login screen for your bank's website or Amazon or a streaming service, and you can't remember what password you used. How are you going to get into your account? Or perhaps it's a site that you think you visited last year when you were buying a holiday gift, but you can't remember for sure. Did you register? Do you have an account already? If you do, what email address did you use for that? It's a problem that any internet user has faced. Most of us have dozens or even hundreds of accounts, and each account needs a username and a password. Some people try to make things easier on themselves by using the same password for different sites. Or perhaps all their passwords start the same way, but have different letters or numbers at the end. By now, we all know reusing passwords is a bad idea. If just one site gets hacked, you are at risk, even if you don't have payment details stored with that vendor. And here's why. The hackers often sell the combination of the username and the password. And then other hackers can try that same combination on many hundreds of websites. If you register as a user on a blog and that blog's data is stolen, then hackers will try your email and password combination on many other sites like banks or shopping sites. They use elaborate scripts to do this with thousands of usernames and sites all at a high speed. So we know reusing passwords is bad, but guess what? So many people do it anyway, and I am even guilty of that. Why? Because it's easier. I know it's wrong, but sometimes I just can't bring myself to invent a strong password and then track it somehow. One solution to this is to store passwords in a Word or Excel or Google Docs document. I've done this, but this can get unwieldy and hard to manage. Plus, that document could get hacked and then you'd really be in trouble. Another problem is that you don't always have access to that document especially if you have multiple devices. Plus, there's still the problem of inventing a secure password. The scripts hackers use rely on words in the dictionary, so any password that contains a dictionary word or a name 
or a small combination of numbers is an easy password to hack. Unfortunately, these are the passwords our human brains can invent and remember too. The solution is one of those long passwords with a nonsensical combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. But it's exhausting to try to create one as a human, much less remember it or save it for later. If this password dilemma sounds familiar, don't worry. There are tools that can help. What you need and what I need is a password manager. A password manager is a program that takes care of everything for you. It can create, store, and even fill in passwords on your computer and mobile phone. All you have to do is remember one master password that unlocks all the rest. Password managers are flexible. They come as browser extensions, desktop apps for Mac and Windows, and mobile apps for iOS and Android. That's critical. You need to have your passwords available wherever you go. They work for websites, but also for standalone applications on your computer, like Zoom, for example. The most popular password managers are LastPass, One Password, and Dashlane. Most have a freemium model where at least some of the service is free to use. LastPass, in particular, has a great free version. Dashlane lets you store fifty passwords free. But the paid version is only three dollars a month, a bargain when you consider everything that's at stake. Most password managers work in the same way. When you register with a website for the first time, your password manager will create a new password for you. You can choose how long you want it to be. And how complicated! You can also enter passwords you've come up with yourself if you prefer. Either way, your password manager tells you how strong your new password is, and then remembers it for you along with the username you chose. The next time you visit that website, your password manager will fill in the username. And password you created, making logging in a breeze. All you need to do is log in to the password manager itself to get at all the passwords stored within its vault. No matter how many unique passwords you create, and no matter how complicated they are, all you ever need to remember is one master password. But that's not all they can do. Password managers are good for storing all sorts of sensitive information that you might want to fill into forms online, but that you can't memorize. Password managers can also store credit card numbers, bank account details, national ID numbers, Wi-Fi passwords, any. Important sensitive piece of data that you can't remember, but that you might not want to leave lying around. Think of it as an old-fashioned safe deposit box for digital accounts. Some modern web browsers can reproduce some of the functions of a password manager, but not all of them. Chrome, for example. Can suggest and remember secure passwords for each site you visit. It's certainly convenient if you are a heavy Chrome user from the same computer. The problem is the data remains tied to your browser. So if you create a login on your laptop, 
it won't be available on your phone or another laptop. A good password manager will even help you by performing a security audit. The software will keep track of which passwords are weak or old or used in more than one place. Some even let you know if a website where you have an account has been hacked. At the click of a button, you can have a list of all the passwords you need to change. And some password managers can even change them for you automatically. It's time. It's past time for me to start using a password manager. I've tried every method in the book. I tried using the same password everywhere. Not smart. I tried using the same base password and just changing a letter or number based on the site. Again, not smart. I tried tracking all my passwords in an Excel document. A little better, but still not ideal. And now I use Chrome's password manager, but it doesn't work if I have to log in on my phone. So that's it. I'm getting a password manager. I'm recording this before Christmas, but one of my goals for my time off over the holidays is to transition to one of the three password managers I mentioned. I think I'll try LastPass. I'll let you know in a few weeks if I was successful. Today's expression is a breeze. What does it mean if something is a breeze? It means it's very easy. It's not complicated. It's quick. And crucially, it's surprising that it's that easy. Earlier in today's lesson, I said that logging into a website with a password manager is a breeze. If you log into a website that you frequently visit and you have the password memorized, it's not a big deal. But that's not always the case. Sometimes the act of logging into a website can be complicated, especially if you forget your password, forget your username, have to request a new one, forget if you even have an account. But guess what? Logging in on your phone, on your browser, wherever. Logging in is a breeze with a password manager. It takes all the complication out of the equation. We say it's a breeze because it's easy and fast, and it's surprising. It's a solution to a problem. I forget if I mentioned in a previous lesson, but I got a COVID antibody test. Here's what happened. I had an appointment to get my annual flu shot in October, and I thought, while I'm already at the doctor's office, I may as well get the COVID antibody test. This test tells you whether your body has produced the chemicals that fight COVID. So if you have the antibodies, you've most likely had COVID. Well, I didn't need to know. It was really just for my own curiosity. So I asked whether I could get the test, and they said sure. They came by with another needle, took a little blood, shipped it off, and I got the results in a few days. It was a breeze. I didn't have to make a special appointment. I didn't have to wait in a line. They didn't have to stick something way up my nose like the normal COVID test. Just a quick little blood sample and I was on my way. They emailed the results. They were negative, by the way. I haven't had COVID. 
It was a breeze. I thought it might be complicated, but it wasn't. It turned out to be a breeze. I've lived in a number of states here in the U.S., and I've had a driver's license in a number of states. When you move across state lines, your new state will usually require you to take the written driver's test. It's usually 20 or 30 questions on a computer. I remember one time I moved to a state and the test was full of statistics. Like, if you don't wear a seatbelt, by what percentage does your chance of dying in a car crash increase? Um, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll just wear my seatbelt all the time. Or... At what weight must a child use a car seat? I have no idea. I don't have kids or a car seat. That was a hard test. But when I moved to Illinois, the test was a breeze. In Illinois, the questions were like, if you see a school bus stopped with red lights flashing, What should you do? That test was a breeze. I was expecting it to be hard, full of statistics and questions about children. But it was easy. That test was a breeze. I've always loved borrowing books from the public library. I still do. But you can now borrow electronic books from many major library systems in the U.S. I started doing it in New York, and Chicago now has a lot of e-books available too. It's a breeze to borrow an e-book. You just log into your account, and my login is my library barcode number, which I never remember, but I'll use a password manager for that in the future. Anyway, you log in, search for the book you want, and if it's available in electronic form, you're just a few clicks away from having it on your Kindle. It's a breeze. No trips to the library, no waiting in line, no hoops to jump through. It's a breeze. You borrow the book, and Amazon pushes it right to my Kindle. Today's quote of the week is from the writer Alexander Coburn. There is no criticism like the criticism of straightforward indifference. Indifference means you don't care, you don't pay any attention to something. These days, so many people do things to provoke a reaction. Criticism is what they crave. They seek conflict. But the quote says, the harshest criticism is to just ignore someone. There is no criticism like the criticism of straightforward indifference, says Alexander Coburn. I do definitely agree with that point. And that's all for today's lesson, the first of 2021. We have lots and lots of great plans for plain English in 2021, by the way. I wish I could tell you all of them right now, but I'll share more as I know more. We had a great live call with Plus members a few weeks ago where we shared our personal and professional goals for 2021. The overriding sentiment on the call was we want to hold on to the good parts of 2020. That could be a slower pace of life, more attention to self-care, 
less running around, more time at home with family. We want to hold on to the good that did come out of 2020 as we look to improve things in 2021. That was a great call. We do two live calls with Plus members per month. And if you're a Plus member, you can see the dates and times and Zoom links on your dashboard. If you're not yet a Plus member, but would like to be, then you can read all the details at plainenglish.com slash plus, P-L-U-S. We'll be back on Thursday with another travel destination. I know, I know, we can't do it yet, but the day is coming. But this will be a fun one, and it's coming up on Thursday. See you then.